It's this time of year in the fall when the pumpkins are turning orange and a lot of the plants are seeing effects of, uh, of the season changing and that's when powdery mildew really comes to the forefront of people's questions, especially to, to myself. And a lot of the questions are how to get rid of it. Um, and there's tons of, of information on the internet about simple ways to, to get rid of it off the surface of the leaves. Uh, so what I want to talk to you about today is some cultural practices that you can do, as well as some surprising facts about powdery mildew that you may not already know. I'm David Spencer and welcome to Gardening with Bugs. As you'll see behind me right here in the pumpkins, uh, there's powdery mildew on every leaf and like literally every single leaf. And that's really not a concern for me on this particular plant because, well, it's almost October and the plant is in decline. So I don't need to wash this off. One, the fruit is already set that I'm gonna be harvesting anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But some people are still concerned about this powdery mildew being in the yard and, and how it can spread to other plants. And so the first thing I wanna to mention is that powdery mildew is a common name for a, for a species um, of fungus like this that infects plants, but there's a variety of powdery mildews and they don't necessarily infect the same plant. So this powdery mildew on my pumpkin is not the same one that was affecting the maple trees this year in the, sum in the middle of the summer. And it's not the same species that will infect cannabis plants or, or some of the other species in my yard. So I don't need to outside in this sort of situation with a variety of plants, I do not need to be concerned about this one spreading. If for some reason I was growing this alongside a cucumber that might survive the winter or something, I'd, I would be a bit protective about, about the spores. But the next thing I want to mention is that what you see here it is not really the whole infection. This is just the fruiting bodies of a fungus. So like a like, um, typical mushroom that you might see in the ground, the, the bulk of like the vegetative growth, if you will, is, is in the soil or it's in whatever, whatever it's decaying, like um, rotten wood or, or some sort of organic matter like that. And it's only when the circumstances are right that the mushroom cap comes up above the surface and that's where the spores come out. So similarly with, with this, what you're seeing on the surface is the spores popping out of the leaf surface. But that means that the plant has previously been infected by the powdery mildew. So yes, rinsing it off with milk or baking soda or even water will wash off the spores, but that's not at all solving the problem of powdery mildew. Now, is powdery mildew a problem? Well, yes, in some cases it is, and particularly in a greenhouse, and it can kill a plant if left sort of unattended. But what you also need to understand is that there's certain circumstances where um, where the plant is going to succumb to powdery mildew because of other factors. And this again with the with the pumpkins here is, is a great example. So the plant, it's not because it's an annual, it's a natural sort of um, process here is to have fast vegetative growth in the springtime in order really for a plant like this to, to kind of take over neighboring plants, have big tall leaves climb up where it needs to maximize the light because it's going to use a ton of energy to set its fruit. Now, once the pumpkins have turned orange, what that is is the plant is now drawing, there's less sunlight, so now it's drawing all the nutrients from the leaves back in to really put all of its energy into the fruit. The leaves don't matter, they're just gonna die and decompose, but it's the fruit that will continue. So that's its number one goal. And it's as the plant starts to decline in the, in the tissue, the, the leaf tissue, that the powdery mildew really comes to the forefront. And that's because it was always there and the plant was just fighting it off with its own natural abilities. And after, after it stopped, like as if its immune system, if you will, was protecting it, now that it's weakened, especially in the leaf tissue, powdery mildew rears its ugly head. So where powdery mildew is really a problem, it's gonna be in a greenhouse where, where your plant is gonna to succumb to it. And there, it's really going to be cultural practices that you're gonna to do to, to maintain powdery mildew not just washing off the spores. So yes, for cosmetic reasons, you might want to wash the spores off, but nine times out of 10, that's actually going to make it worse. Not immediately, but I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, in most cases, what you need to do is avoid the situations, the environment that powdery mildew loves. So I will touch on that quickly. All this is fairly common knowledge, but temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius, powdery mildew is typically subdued. Um, temperatures below 10 to 15 degrees 
it's the same thing. So we're really talking about that, unfortunately, that window where vegetative growth is usually accelerated anyways, is, is where it operates. But unlike what, what is commonly out there in terms of information about powdery mildew, it's actually not wet circumstances that powdery mildew does, does well. It's actually dry circumstances. Now, yes, you'll see them start to fruit and stuff like that as the weather gets more humid and wet, and that's because it's the change from dry to wet that causes the spores to come up on the leaves. So that's a condition that they're looking for for their sexual reproduction cycle. But where it's actually, where it actually takes over the plants is usually from the stress of it being dry. And that's where some of the techniques like washing off the spores become a problem because in a dry circumstance like we've had here in the, at the end of this summer, uh, people go out there and start spraying milk on there. Well, you're getting a massive spike in humidity. So yes, the milk, um, because it's basic, there's a bit of a pH change and it's actually fairly effective at wiping off these spores. And then it leaves a residue of like proteins and fats, which can be populated by wild yeast and other bacteria and, and then compete over the surface. So it is actually effective for that point of, from that point. But because it's so dry out and you've added this liquid, you get the spike in humidity and you're actually going to cause a, a, this, you're going to produce the environment that's conducive to it fruiting elsewhere or really that you're just going to confuse the, the poor uh, powdery mildew into trying to spor sporulate again. Uh, same with like um, solutions with baking powder. So it's that, that addition of water. Um, and that's why you'll also see like overhead watering this time of year in the spring is going to cause this, this um, explosion. And so again, it's not necessarily that you're adding water, it's the fact that it's dry to begin with. If it's just constantly raining for a week here, you're not necessarily going to see powdery mildew explode unless it's already been infected in the plant. Another important cultural practice is the application of sulfur. Now for decades, if not a hundred years or more, uh, growers, especially in greenhouses, have recognized that burning elemental sulfur is a great way of subduing powdery mildew. Um, it's, wi it's widely practiced. Um, but what a lot of growers are realizing now is that the application of elemental sulfur in the soil, like we might do to change the pH, for example, um, is is very effective at boosting a plant's immune system towards to to powdery mildew. So what a lot of growers are doing right now is taking their commercial soil mix and adding a little bit of of sulfur to it, and that's it's having great effects. Now, a word of warning for that one, like I mentioned, that's typically done to to lower the pH of your of your soil. So you don't need to add that much. Like sulfur, an element is really uh, it's absorbed like at microscopic level so you really don't need that much uh, to boost the immune system so take a look at the label and what it should say is so many pounds per square foot or or whatever some sort of cert amount per area is going to cause a certain ph drop in the soil so avoid changing an entire ph point if you can and if your soil is already too acidic i'd, I'd warn against this uh, to begin with but as i mentioned to you earlier powdery mildew sometimes can just be forgotten because it's just part of the natural cycle and I, I did mention with the with the pumpkins here like that's just part of the decline of the leaves it doesn't matter in fact it's probably going to help break them down and turn them into compost a lot quicker than it would if the plant declined without the powdery mildew infection but there's so many other things going on and right now behind me there this plant has like almost on every leaf a little micro coccinellid so coccinellid is the ladybug shaped beetle um, and these guys are quite small, um, eating powdery mildew. And that, and so you need to recognize too, I mean, powdery mildew is food for something else. So here I've got this, this entire crop of powdery mildew that I'm just leaving to its devices. And I've got all sorts of insects feeding on that powdery mildew. Now, a lot of those insects will establish, reproduce. I'll have more of them that eat them. And then next year, of course, if they have established in my yard, I'm going to have a reduction in powdery mildew because they'll be eating the spores that are landing on leaves throughout the year anyways. So you need to recognize that there's tons of things that eat powdery mildew. There's viruses of it. There's other bacteria that will attack it. There's other fungus that will attack it. So like all things, sometimes you could, just leaving it is the best. Let me show you what these little beetles look like. Here's a cannabis plant that I've been growing in the yard and it's right at that sensitive uh, 
point where it's starting to flower. So again, just like in typical annual, the, the leaves are really, um, really lacking a lot of vigor. They're putting all the energy back into the flowers. So the leaves are very susceptible to powdery mildew. And it, it can be a tight uh, plant, it's sticky. So a lot of the spores stick to it. So it does have a tendency to have powdery mildew quite bad. But what I wanna show the, the cannabis growers is that outside here, even though it's raining a little bit, um, and I don't have this covered whatsoever, the powdery mildew really is no no more of a problem than it would be if I did cover it. In fact, sometimes covering it traps enough enough moisture at the time where that's going to cause it to fruit that uh, you end up exacerbating the problem. So the, this cannabis, yes, if you look, there is some the, some powdery mildew on the leaves. It's not on the flowers, and as long as it's out here open and the wind is blowing through it, I'm really not going to have a, an explosion that's going to cause me any problems. But what I also want to point out is that this is right next to another bed where I'm growing um, all sorts of squashes and pumpkins. So that one is loaded up with powdery mildew. And as I mentioned, that powdery mildew species is not the same one that affects cannabis. So even though those are right next to each other, I really don't have to worry. So I don't even have to treat it on cucumbers to protect the cannabis. That's, that's not a problem whatsoever. So remember that powdery mildew, it has its place in the natural course of things. Of course, it's infecting your plant. It's fruiting on the leaf surface, which looks terrible. And yes, that can spread to other plants of, this, of the same species, but there are insects, bugs, there's all sorts, of, um, all sorts of things that are eating and living off of that powdery mildew. So if you can leave it, you should. And remember, it's usually cultural practices that are causing powdery mildew to be worse. You will always find it worse in greenhouses because of extremes in humidity that are not, that are not managed by natural airflow and insects. Now, so it's important to recognize that powdery mildew, it starts off as spores. It's in the air all the time, always. And one of a plant's natural defenses is, of course, rain. So rain is constantly washing spores off the leaves. And it, it takes really special environments for, and, and um, a weakened plant, typically, um, to, to become infected by those spores. So that's why when we cover plants and we don't water them overhead, you're not, you're not really protecting from powdery mildew. You're actually allowing the spores to settle there and take, take hold. And then as soon as there is some sort of moisture, dry, wet, extreme conditions, then suddenly you have a powdery, powdery mildew uh, problem. So it's really like cultural practices is number one. Add a bit of sulfur to your soil. Allow nature to like wind to just gently go through your plants. Um, allow overhead watering and rain occasionally. Never leave things soaking wet. You'll have other diseases and, and viruses as well. Um, and, and monitor rogue out plants if you have to and grow a variety of plants and be okay with some powdery mildew as long as you're allowed um, as long as it's not going to affect, obviously, the saleability of your plants or, or some sort of uh, threshold that you've set for yourself for cosmetic reasons. So just be okay with it. It's just like a typical pest. It's just like aphids. It, the more aphids you have, the more predators you have, the less aphids have a major impact in your garden. It's the same with powdery mildew. And just like with aphids, when I talk about um, trying to target, trying to grow aphids on plants where that specific aphid can't spread to other plants, it's the same with powdery mildew. So consider growing pumpkins to boost the powdery mildew in your yard when that's not the same powdery mildew species that's going to affect other plants that maybe you care more about in your plant. Same with like this year on our, on our uh, big leaf maples here on the west coast, they were covered in powdery mildew. Well, that powdery mildew has nothing to do with the plants growing in my yard, so it was not a concern. And in fact, because it was so huge, there's so many things that eat powdery mildew, their populations exploded. I'm expecting at least this, this fall, if not next year, to be, uh, to be a, a good year for powdery mildew. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.